The movie has a gripping tale centered around a troubled teenage girl named Dorothy, living in an isolated island community, and Jane, a psychiatrist from the city assigned to her case. The film begins with a disturbing scene where a couple rushes upstairs to check on their baby, left under the care of Dorothy, upon the recommendation of the local pastor. The father's shock and the mother's screams upon seeing their baby with Dorothy set a tense and unsettling tone for the movie. The incident of Dorothy allegedly abusing the baby quickly becomes the talk of the town, spreading throughout the community, and even making headlines in a newspaper far beyond their provincial borders. This news catches the attention of Jane, a psychiatrist grappling with her own profound grief. She and her husband are still reeling from the tragic loss of their only child, who drowned in a bay. In an emotional moment, Jane, cigarette in hand, expresses to her husband her weariness and despair, hinting at her desperate need for a change. One evening, while casually flipping through a newspaper, Jane stumbles upon the story of Dorothy's case. Intrigued and seeing an opportunity to step away from the pain of her city life, she decides to apply for the position of Dorothy's psychiatrist. Her application is swiftly accepted, and she sets off for the island by ship, eager to start this new chapter. Upon her arrival, Jane encounters a startling situation. While driving to Dorothy's location, she witnesses two cars racing and, in a frantic attempt to avoid a collision, accidentally drives her car into the sea. The ensuing commotion attracts the attention of the local rescue team and community members, including the island's sheriff, Colin. Drenched and disoriented, Jane is approached by Colin, who welcomes her, aware of her assignment to Dorothy's case. She explains her mishap to Colin and the others, who are left baffled by the bizarre turn of events. Despite their confusion, they escort her to Eileen's institution, where Dorothy is receiving care. Jane's arrival at the institution is met with a palpable sense of discomfort. As she enters the crowded hall, every eye turns to her, their stares making her feel conspicuously out of place. She navigates through the crowd to meet Eileen and is shown Dorothy's room, which will also serve as her temporary accommodation during the case. As Jane announces her intention to help Dorothy, she immediately senses the community's unease and reluctance toward her involvement. Jane, having left her hometown for a new assignment on an isolated island, experiences her first night in a room provided by the institution. Her initial reaction is one of disappointment. The accommodations are far from what she had envisioned. This feeling of letdown is a stark reminder of the vast difference between her life in the city and her current surroundings. The following morning, Eileen inquires about Jane's first night on the island. Jane mentions that she didn't sleep well due to someone playing the guitar all night in the room above hers. Eileen responds with surprise, informing her that no one at the institution plays the guitar, leaving Jane puzzled and questioning what she heard the previous night. Jane's first meeting with Dorothy is tense. Jane approaches Dorothy with the intent to help, but Dorothy remains distant and skeptical of Jane's intentions. Later, Jane visits the parents of the baby Dorothy was babysitting. They recount the horrifying incident where they found Dorothy forcing the baby to drink milk in a harsh manner. Upon their intervention, Dorothy retreated behind the crib and cried inconsolably. This encounter leads Jane to believe that Dorothy's issues might be medical rather than criminal, strengthening her resolve to help. In an effort to build a rapport with Dorothy, Jane employs a subtle approach. She takes Dorothy on a hike hoping that a change of scenery and common conversation topics will ease the tension between them. This strategy seems to work as Dorothy begins to let her guard down slightly. However, Jane's stay on the island is further complicated by a disturbing incident. She is awakened at midnight by the sound of a car horn. Peering out, she sees three menacing teenagers leaning on an orange car, the same youth she had narrowly avoided on her first day. They aggressively demand that she leave the community, with one even mimicking a throat-slitting gesture as a threat. The next morning, Jane reports this alarming encounter to Colin, the island's sheriff. Colin, however, dismisses her concerns, asserting that he knows every teenager in the province and that there is no one fitting her description, nor is there an orange car. Frustrated by Colin's lack of assistance, Jane decides to focus on her work with Dorothy. Meanwhile, the pastor and Eileen's family gather around a table, engaging in prayer as Dorothy exhibits unusual behavior. The pastor somberly suggests that their efforts may not be effective this time, indicating a sense of doubt and uncertainty about Dorothy's condition. 
Soon after, Jane delves deeper into unraveling the mysteries surrounding Dorothy's life. She learns that Dorothy, having lost her mother and with no known father, lives with her aunt. This discovery adds another layer to the complex situation Jane is trying to understand. Jane attempts to engage with Dorothy by taking her out for a walk. Initially, Dorothy is reluctant and even throws a tantrum, indicating her disinterest. However, once outside, Dorothy's demeanor shifts dramatically, and she begins to enjoy their time together. Jane observes this change and notes Dorothy's childlike behavior, which seems unusual for her age. During their walk, Dorothy refers to herself as Mimi, speaking in a child's voice. This revelation leads Jane to suspect that Dorothy might be suffering from a personality disorder. To explore this further, Jane continues the conversation, playing along with Dorothy's altered state. When asked about her age, Dorothy, as Mimi, claims to be just three years old. Their interaction becomes more intriguing as they enter a children's clothing shop. Jane buys a dress for Dorothy, much to the puzzlement of the shop owners who observe Dorothy acting younger than her actual age. Upon returning, Dorothy's behavior takes another alarming turn. She violently rips apart the dress Jane had bought and becomes aggressive, a stark contrast to the timid and well-mannered Dorothy Jane had known. When Jane tries to calm her and inquire about the identity she's now assuming, Dorothy pushes her to the ground. Eileen intervenes, but Jane, frustrated, insists that they should not interrupt her session with Dorothy. Through these encounters, Jane concludes that Dorothy is likely suffering from multiple personality disorder and suspects there are more personalities yet to be discovered. Meanwhile, unsettling events continue to plague the village. One day, a villager discovers all his sheep brutally slaughtered and left in a barrel. Jane arrives at the scene and tries to gather information about Dorothy in a peaceful manner. However, the villager, overwhelmed with anger and grief, lashes out at Jane, accusing her of treating their island like a laboratory and blaming her for his misfortune. Shaken by the confrontation, Jane leaves in a state of rage. Colin, the sheriff, tries to console her, explaining the villager's harsh words as a reaction to his distress. Jane's investigation into Dorothy's condition deepens, uncovering startling revelations. She discovers that Duncan, Mary, and Kurt were teenagers who tragically died in a car accident a decade ago. Intriguingly, these teenagers were the children of residents living in Eileen's institution, hinting at a deeper, more mysterious connection to the community. As Jane continues her work with Dorothy, she gains insight into the distinct personalities that exist within Dorothy's mind. There's Mimi, the childlike persona that represents Dorothy's former self, and then Mary, a party-loving girl, and Kurt, a boy who ominously warns Jane about a dominant personality named Duncan. Jane is baffled by how these personalities, especially Mary Kurt and Duncan, are connected to Dorothy. During a session with Kurt, Jane learns about the assertive and controlling nature of Duncan. To manage the situation, she and Colin sedate Dorothy, intending to provide her with a peaceful night's rest. Jane informs Eileen that the medication will ensure Dorothy sleeps through the night, and she leaves, planning to return in the morning. However, shortly after Jane's departure, Dorothy, now under the control of Mary, awakens. Dressed in party attire, Mary heads outside and flirts with a young man, but the encounter turns sour, leaving her pushed to the ground and injured. In a disoriented state, Dorothy regains consciousness, finding herself alone and lost, with no recollection of how she ended up there. Distressed and confused, she wanders off into the night, clutching a wig left by Mary. Meanwhile, Jane receives an urgent phone call about Dorothy, learning that she has been found near a cliff, having apparently attempted ending her own life. Rushing to the scene, Jane discovers that it was Kurt, another of Dorothy's personalities, who intervened to prevent Dorothy from taking her own life. Jane brings Dorothy back home, but the situation escalates when Dorothy, reverting to her own identity, becomes agitated and upset that she is still alive. The encounter takes a darker turn when Duncan, the most menacing of Dorothy's personalities, emerges and cruelly taunts Jane about the death of her son. This experience is profoundly unsettling for Jane, and she leaves in a state of horror after envisioning her deceased son's spirit in Dorothy's body. Back in her room, Jane is tormented by vivid hallucinations of her late son, David. 
She spends the night in anguish, crying and conversing with the apparition of her son, grappling with her own grief and the disturbing events unfolding around Dorothy. The narrative continues as Jane, deeply troubled by the events she has experienced, visits Colin's house to share her ordeal. Colin listens to her recount the bizarre and disturbing occurrences of the past few days. He expresses his own unease about the situation and suggests that perhaps Jane should consider returning to her previous life, away from the island's peculiar and unsettling atmosphere. However, Jane, exhausted from staying up all night and overwhelmed by the emotional toll of her work with Dorothy, falls asleep on Colin's couch. Later that night, Colin is awakened by a strange noise. Investigating the source, he makes a horrifying discovery. His dog has been brutally killed, mirroring the earlier incident involving his friend's sheep. Devastated and powerless to change the situation, Colin retreats to bed, crying himself to sleep. The next morning, Jane wakes up before Colin and leaves him a message, firmly stating her resolve not to abandon Dorothy despite the challenges she faces. She continues her investigation with renewed determination. During a session with Dorothy, as they ascend the stairs, Dorothy suddenly gets a nosebleed and freezes, an indication of her acute distress. When Jane inquires about her condition, Dorothy urges her to leave the island, sensing that death looms ominously in their midst. Jane, however, remains focused on her therapeutic approach and attempts to delve into Dorothy's past to uncover the root of her psychological trauma. Under Jane's guidance, Dorothy reveals a haunting connection to her mother, who worked as a morgue attendant. Dorothy recalls how her mother forced her to kiss the bodies of the dead teenagers, a traumatic experience that led to the creation of the Mimi personality as a coping mechanism. Jane comforts Dorothy, helping her to release the hold of Mimi and let go of that part of her past. In a moment of empathy, Jane lays beside her, offering support and presence. However, that night, unbeknownst to Jane, Mary, one of Dorothy's other personalities, takes control and leaves. Mary, embodying Dorothy's body, visits Colin's home and confronts him, speaking in a voice eerily reminiscent of the deceased Mary. As she taunts him about their shared past, Colin, overwhelmed by guilt and shock, tragically takes his own life. Jane, waking up to find Dorothy missing, rushes outside, where she sees townspeople converging in one direction. She follows the crowd, only to discover Colin's lifeless body, a gun in his hand. The scene is a grim testament to the profound impact Dorothy's multiple personalities have on those around her, and the tragic consequences that ensue. In the climactic moments of the story, the community gathers near the sea, tensions running high. Among them is the man who had earlier found his sheep slain in a disturbing manner. He confronts the pastor, demanding action, and answers. During this heated exchange, Jane discerns that the community is blaming Dorothy for the recent string of unsettling events. In a dramatic turn, Duncan, one of the personalities within Dorothy, takes control and decides to unveil the truth. He recounts the tragic events of the night he, Mary, and Kurt died. They had been at a party where they found Mary being assaulted by four local men. Duncan and Kurt managed to intervene, stopping the attack and fleeing with Mary in Duncan's car. Tragically, their attempt to escape ended in their deaths, caused by a car chase initiated by the assailants. The truth stuns the community, especially when Duncan reveals that the attackers were Colin, the father of the abused baby, and two of his friends, one of whom is the man voicing his complaints at the gathering. The revelation of this dark secret shatters the community. The villagers, horrified by the confession, turn their backs on the guilty men. In the midst of the chaos, Jane tries to step in but is accidentally pushed by one of the implicated men. She falls, hitting her head on a rock, and dies from the injury. The man responsible for her death, desperate to maintain the peace of the village, persuades everyone to remain silent about the incident. In the final scenes of the movie, the pastor takes decisive action against the abusers, banishing them and their families from the island. The community agrees to cover up Jane's death, planning to tell the outside world that she left the island suddenly and without any indication of her future plans. Jane, in her last moments, is seen communicating with her husband, who has now taken control of Dorothy's body. He instructs Jane to leave, informing her that she is the last remaining personality within Dorothy. 
Jane, accepting this closure, thanks him and departs, leaving Dorothy to herself. The movie concludes with Dorothy, finally free from the multiple personalities that tormented her, smiling brightly, a symbol of her newfound liberation and peace. Did this story spook you out? Let us know in the comments below. For more horror movie recaps, subscribe to our channel, and we will see you in the next one. Fear awaits you.